I am going to try to teach you how to love physics. And that happens when you learn how to understand physics. So, for today's lesson, I will be talking about vectors. I have noticed through my last year of tutoring that the greatest problem most students face is they are never really given a solid understanding of vectors. This is understandable because you are never given any introduction to vectors in your algebra or trigonometry classes, and most physics classes only spend about a week introducing vectors and then proceed to run on through the rest of physics assuming you have complete command of vectors. So I am going to spend some time making detailed videos about what vectors actually are, how to mathematically manipulate them, and how to correctly fit them into physical laws. Today I will simply show you what a vector is, the advantages of working with vectors, and the precise mathematical definition of a vector. The point is, physics is the quantitative study of motion. This means that we want to actually get our hands on the hard numbers that describe how things move. It is not enough to simply say that a baseball will go up and then down. We want to be able to determine how long the ball is in the air, the exact height the ball will reach, where it will land once it hits the ground, and so forth. To do this, we must get our hands on the mathematical quantities of motion. In this picture, there's a black ball at point 1, a blue ball at point 2, a red at 3, and a green at 4. I am going to apply some motion on these balls to move each ball to a new location. I will specifically apply the same motion to each ball. Notice that the black is now displaced to point 5, the blue to 6, and so forth. If I wish to store the information of the motion of all these balls, I must remember four pieces of information, the four point locations, points 5, 6, 7, and 8. However, if instead I define the motion, I will call it D for displacement, I don't have to remember the four points. I just have to know that I applied D to each ball. You may be thinking that this is not a very useful simplification, but recall what we are aiming to do in physics. We want to be able to get our hands on the numbers that completely describe the motion of a particle. Take the example of the baseball. If we only discuss the location of the ball, we will have to memorize every single point location of the ball at all time. Essentially an infinite amount of information. But if instead we start to define more general quantities, like what we did for the, with the four colored balls, the equivalent knowledge will be expressed with just a few of these new sorts of quantities. Now I want to give you a precise mathematical definition of a displacement. Simply drawing an arrow from one point to another, as we did in the first example, is not an actual precise mathematical definition. So I take this red ball. I want to move it from point one to point two. I want to select the displacement that will take the red ball from point 1 to point 2. Shown are several displacements that I may subject the red ball to. I want to eliminate all the displacements that do not end up at point 2. This is simple pictorially since by looking you can just see which displacements take the ball to point 2 and which do not. But remember I want a precise mathematical definition. First notice that there is a specific distance between point 1 and point 2. I'll call that distance L. Note that any displacement with a length less than L cannot bring the red ball to point 2, and neither can any displacement that has a length greater than L. So the, the displacement that we want must have a length L. Suppose this is the definition that we want, that the displacement must simply be equal to L. Well, here are several displacements that all have length L. Note they are not the same displacement since each one brings the red ball to different locations. Even though they all have length L, they don't all bring the red ball to point two. So our definition that the displacement must simply have length L is not restrictive enough. Notice that only requiring the displacement to have a length L allows for a, any displacement that ends on a circle of radius L. I am going to add to the definition and select the only the one displacement that goes from point 1 to point 2. 
to do that, I need a selection based on direction. I will define a specific angle from the horizontal and call it theta. Now I have a definition that precisely selects one and only one displacement from all possible displacements. See how there is only one displacement that has a length L and angle theta from the horizontal. So in the precise mathematical dis definition of displacement, we must define a length and a direction. Displacement is one example of a vector quantity. Other types we will play with are velocity, acceleration, force, and torque. All of these vectors are defined in the same way, by a magnitude and a direction. That is essentially what a vector is. It is a quantity that requires two pieces of data to define it, a magnitude and a direction. In future videos, I will show you how to add and multiply vectors, how physics can be understood within the framework of vectors. So hopefully this helped out with your general understanding of vectors. If you have any other questions, just go ahead and leave them down in the comments section.